Lower latency and less pressure on the network is key for our industry to move forward. This opens the door for innovation with mobile devices like the connected car and critical infrastructure networks that's via M2M technologies. But what's available in the market that can reconfigure the current mobile network paradigm so consumers can maximize their quality of experience? Joining us to tell us just that is John Healy. He's the general manager of the SDN division at Intel. And Dirk Lindemeyer, he's business owner of Liquid Applications at Nokia Solutions and Networks. And gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thanks, Dave. Good to see you. That was a lengthy intro. I got through it, I think, OK. Uh, John, I want to start with you. I want to talk about this discussion we're having and these new technologies we're seeing in the market of pushing technologies towards the edge and away from the core. What is that all about? Um, essentially, it's about ensuring that the uh, network can be constructed such a way that it gives the greatest scale, uh, is most efficient to operate and manage, and creates more capability in terms of the type of services that can actually be delivered. And if you consider a challenge that's presented in a network where more and more consumers are using that the capacity and capabilities of the network, uh, that leads to forms of bottlenecks, forms of points of congestion. The more uh, technologies are pushed out and capabilities are pushed toward the edge of the network, especially for new services delivery, the greater the flexibility that's created and the better the utility of the, of the resources that are available within the network. Also, it enables the opportunity to have services that are customized towards a user's context or experience uh, at any one time, uh, it being you know, dependent on the, the locality of the, the customer. Dirk, let's talk a little bit uh, today about the Radio Applications Cloud Server and how that builds technology on current infrastructure, namely base stations. Right, so that, uh, that product, the uh, Radio Applications Cloud Server, is a, is a plug-in unit that uh, can be inserted into NSN's LTE base stations. So it's what we call a zero footprint installation. You don't need any additional boxes uh, on the site, but it really is fully mechanically integrated uh, with the base station. and. It's just one plug-in unit, but it totally changes what a base station can do. So for, I would say, decades, base stations have really been doing one thing and one thing only, and that is forwarding data, or in the earlier days, uh, voice calls. And now we are adding an element of programmability into the base station um, that hasn't been there before. Uh, and not only are we doing that, but we are also, uh, with that new cart, if you will, um, allowing to change the software of the base station much more frequently. Or not of the base station, the software of the uh, of the um, applications running on the space stations much more frequently. So nowadays the base station would change software every six to 12 months. With that server, we are able to deploy and undeploy applications basically on a daily or even at the minute basis. And this kind of uh, service deployment agility is totally unheard of in the telecom space out there in the radio access. So that's, uh, that's a big leap forward and it really changes the base station away from just being a data pump towards like a small, uh, highly distributed uh, data center, you could say. Dirk, you've moved from, or the liquid application from proof of concept to trial to deployment. What was the biggest challenge that you faced in doing and in, in working that process? So it is a new technology. Um, when we started with, uh, with LTE uh, several years ago, we had the same toothing problems. So it just uh, took us some time to get these pilots uh, up and running. We also detected several things uh, along the way that uh, we, we could only find out uh, in the, uh, in the trials and pilots. One was about the, the performance of the core server, which is uh, accompanying um, the edge server. And uh, this is actually where, where Intel could help us uh, uh, quite fast to introduce uh, DPDK into this core server and therewith crank up the performance quite substantially. So, John, challenges during this process? Uh, well, I think uh, Dirk's covered it well in integration challenges. And you know, you think you only learn through the, the, the pilot to realization phase. Uh, Dirk mentioned DPDK, the data plane development kit, and that's really a set of uh, capabilities we've added and continue to add to to, to make our uh, ability to implement the kinds of applications that are running in, in, the, in the network uh, to have them run at more optimally on our standard platforms and then continue to grow that. That introduces both the, the performance uh, required but also the programmability required to really give that, that future uh, life to the, to the deployments once they, 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 uh, they're implemented. John, there's a lot of layers and nuances to the back end of this type of technology and application, but how do you monetize this? How do you monetize it that, that it directly benefits the end user, let's say? Yeah, it, it happens at a number of levels. I think monetizing is first realized through cost avoidance. It's you know, a, a cost of ownership reduction. Uh, I think that manifests through 
the usage of more and more standard technologies, more and more standard platforms. But I think the real goal is how you create new services in the eye of the end user, the person who can uh, enjoy services tailored to their usage, their needs, their context at any one time, and the ability to, to flexibly deploy that into the network. So as, uh, as Dirk mentioned, the, the base station is no longer a data pump, and no longer a provider of raw connectivity, but it becomes a more capable part of the network for the deployment of a service that is monetizable because it adds incremental value to the consumer of that service. Dirk, from a vendor perspective, and I think you're just about to add on here, uh, how do you monetize this type of application? So, end user experience and cost avoidance. I mean, these are these are two two of the really dominating uh, themes in there. But the nice thing is that we can actually go beyond consumers with this, um, especially what comes to Internet of Things applications. So, you can really look at this this upgraded base station as a as a completely new platform for monetization. Think about, say, an operator having 20,000 of these uh, nodes deployed in the network. They are all small small platforms for creating new services, for example, in the net, Internet of Things uh, space. So now all of a sudden, the operator becomes much more relevant uh, in, in these applications. So what we are showing uh, here at Mobile World Congress is, for example, a, a video analytics application where normally uh, the operator would just connect cameras yeah, and just feed the data through the entire network for seeing it analyzed at some central um, uh, central uh, data centers. Now we can actually do this analysis already on the base station, um, which is a lot faster and it relieves the network, the backhaul network, from all this raw camera traffic which would have to flow across the network otherwise. So now all of a sudden the operator is not just piping the data through anymore, but uh, they have a, a very valuable part of the entire M2M solution um, that, they are, that they are hosting and that gives them a totally different uh, platform for monetizing uh, their network. Dirk, I want to ask you what was the primary impetus behind integrating Intel's architecture into this cloud server? So, first of all, we really wanted to stay away from anything that uh, was uh, telecom technology in the sense that uh, it had to be pure IT, although it sits in the heart of the telco network. And uh, we chose Intel for, for several reasons. One is performance for virtualized workloads, yeah? so that was a uh, that was a clear decision. Uh, the second one was really scalability, so we can actually uh, run applications in the base station, but there is also a bigger, a bigger server, which is uh, sitting in the core network, um, which, we, uh, uh, which we use the same technology for. And then thirdly, and, and maybe that's really the most important reason, is that um, we wanted to work together with Intel for, for uh, enabling the ecosystem to develop against this platform. And we as a network infrastructure vendor, we, we don't have uh, many of uh, these liaisons that uh, Intel is having out there with the, with the other ecosystem companies. And, and in this sense, uh, we made the partnership work at two levels, at the technology level, which we spoke about here, but then also at the ecosystem level, where really we try to, uh, to identify these companies which would benefit most from being taken on such kind of a platform. And, uh, and there with uh, add value on top of the basic platform. John, a lot of times when we speak, we talk about um, theorizing technologies, you know, the beginning stage of developing, developing a new technology, then we get to the proof of concept stage as well, which is an interesting discussion. Um, can you give us a real world example of how this cloud server can benefit users and users? I think the, Dirk has mentioned some of the ability, some of the things we've seen here, being able to provide services at the edge of the network that are uh, data analytics as an, as an example. You think of the IoT, the, uh, the Internet of Things and the ability to manage more close to the point of capture all of the aggregated information that's being, that's being you know, uh, Get brought, drawn from sensors and then aggregated onto the edge of the network and then analyze those so you can make real-time decisions around provisioning uh, of, of the uh, utility or in responding to you know, degraded performance in the, in the end device where the sensors are capturing that information. That's an example of being deployed today where the, that kind of analytics can occur right at the edge of the network uh, to enable a utility vendor or a, an air conditioning vendor or a HVAC vendor to manage the, the deployed infrastructure and use their ability to make those decisions closer to the point of capture so that they don't have to rely on a back end, you know, crunch the numbers at night and produce a report in the morning. They have real time information, real time uh, dynamic responsiveness that's enabled by their ability to do that kind of analytics right at the edge of the network. That's, that's just one example. Uh, video analysis is another where, you know, optimally transcoding or recoding content to, to, to be appropriate for the device that's consuming it, or for security applications, doing video analytics on the security and determining whether there are changes in the profile of the image that could trigger a security event, as an example. All these are the kinds of examples we're seeing uh, become uh, capable today as ways of uh, providing real value to the end customer.
Derek, of course, we're here at Mobile World Congress 2014 in Barcelona. I think you might have had a chance to walk around the floor just a bit. Are, are there any technologies that you passed by that you thought that radio applications cloud server could benefit? Well, there is one big application area that we are just opening the book um, to be written still on, and that is and that is the whole indoor enterprise space, really. So um, I'm I'm most excited about the fact that we today or not today at this event we are launching um, the next evolution of this technology, which uh, means that we are putting it into the small cell, uh, not into the small cell itself, but into a aggregation point, which we call the flexi zone controller. So this is a uh, uh, a device um, which can, for example, be deployed inside uh, malls, inside airports, inside enterprises, and which is serving an entire cluster of small cells. Um, and uh, that is essentially opening up a whole new space of enterprise applications that we haven't, uh, we haven't looked at so far yet, uh, very much related to the use of, uh, of uh, edge computing for indoor. Um, for example, one really good example, I think, is, is uh, shopper engagement and malls, yeah, where today people coming into a mall, they would have to sign up to a Wi-Fi network and then somehow the shops would hopefully be able to interact with their, with their physical customers. Now, imagine such a mall would be equipped with small cells, um, which are then powered by this edge compute capability sitting in the mall's equipment room. All of a sudden, um, these kind of really, really interesting use cases in terms of shopper engagement, guiding people through shops, um, pushing advertisements to them, using augmented reality to overlay or superimpose prices or any kind of other information about the goods to be bought. Um, that is a whole new area that we are just starting to explore. And uh, this combination of, uh, of uh, our new access point plus the zone controller plus edge computing inside the zone controller, so I think that's really, really powerful. And uh, should I have the time, I'll definitely uh, look around here and, uh, and see what enterprise applications we could find uh, to um, to build a really good value proposition here. Derek, I want to get your comments on your relationship and, and how that's grown uh, with Intel and using the Intel architecture. Uh, how has that uh, experience been for you? So our experience has been very good. As said, uh, we had uh, a, uh, a partnership which was really set to be at two levels, at the technology level to build the product. And we spoke about DPDK as one example where we needed help and, and we got help uh, very quickly. We could even incorporate this uh, in, uh, in our first release still, so that was uh, that was very good. And then the second layer is the is really the ecosystem development. So, how can we work together to uh, attract companies to develop against this platform? Um, to us, this is also of extreme importance, as we wouldn't be able really to sell an empty server. And also, the operators they need a little bit of help to actually uh, find the right applications for populating the server with. And and this is something that we are doing that we are doing together. So we have a. A collaboration also uh, at that level and we have had some pretty exciting conversations with ISVs here even OTTs um, uh, nothing that we can speak publicly about yet but uh, there's uh, definitely more to come on that front as well so John if you don't mind quick comments about your relationship with NSN and where do you see that relationship going let's say over the next couple of years I think I'd echo Dirk's comments I think it's uh, tremendously exciting for us to have the collaboration with a with a partner like NSN and um, I think it leads to uh, because of the multi-level relationship, technology, business realization, partner and ecosystem development. Uh, it leads to a positive spiral of innovation that's stimulated and fueled by that, in, that, that collaboration. Uh, so that we can not only learn from each other but you know, and improve both sides on the technology front, but also through partner development and ultimately deployment realization, really see these technologies come to market in, in commercial deployable forms. Uh, I think that's only good for the way the industry is going to evolve. And I think it leads to even further opportunity for us to continue to deepen the relationship into the future. We're really excited about it. Dirk, as you know, there's a number of, uh, or a couple of demos out there on the floor, again, at Mobile World Congress 2014 in the Intel booth, um, illustrating that proof of concept process from POC to the trial stage. Can you talk about that briefly? Yeah, actually, it's, uh, it's on the Intel booth, and interestingly enough, it's also on the Vodafone booth. Yeah. And uh, it's, of course, also on the NSN booth. And uh, these, these uh, demos, I think, they, they really um, outline the versatility of, of this entire approach. So we are showing very different things. We are showing, um, we are showing video analytics. We are also showing content acceleration. Um, we are showing augmented reality. Our Vodafone is showing augmented reality. So there's a whole breadth of applications um, that is being demonstrated here on three different stands at, uh, at Mobile World Congress. So that's, um, um, that I think really uh, underlines the fact that you can do many different things with it and it really 
totally is up to the operator what to do and uh, and to populate the platform with uh, with the right applications. So it's interesting interesting for TINA to follow that process, the POC to trial to market and watching that product be commercialized. And John mentioned that before. So uh, we appreciate uh, being uh, witness to that uh, that process. And thanks for discussing that with us as well. Pleasure. Thanks, John. And for this program on demand and all of our Mobile World Congress 2014 coverage, please go to tinow.org. And for updates from the event floor, please follow us on Twitter at TIA underscore now and on Facebook at facebook.com slash tia.now. So long. <laughs>